What do you think you've got to say when you speak to the world about um, uh, the things that your passion? Um, uh, um, I guess it's that we are intrinsically linked with nature in a way that you cannot separate yourself from it as much as you try. Um, so essentially you have to immerse yourself back into nature in order to um, actually live a full and meaningful life. Oh, lovely. A fulfilling life. And, and there is basically nothing more interesting um, and more important. Um, nothing, nothing that humans can create comes even close to the complexity of even the most simple house plant. Um, even an ant is way more complex than anything that any human has ever made, including the Large Hadron Collider. It's basically simple compared to an ant. So understand its power, understand its glory. Um, what does the Hadron Collider mean to you? Uh, the Large Hadron Collider to me means um, that is people searching for meaning and also searching for answers um, on the one hand but on the other hand if it, it came to um, be able to create nuclear fusion and help us understand the atomic world better and that one discovery if, if it were to be implemented and we could um, essentially wipe out all um, carbon emitting fossil fuels and all that kind of stuff and went purely to um, nuclear fusion um, we could essentially save the world almost overnight um, obviously you'd have to build the infrastructure and that would take a very long time but um, it's a start do you know, do you know that your hands your, your hands I've just filmed them they talk Indeed, they do. They talk like your mouth. Yeah. They they talk like your tongue, and you're you are not speaking only with your mouth, brain connecting to your lips. You're speaking with your the ends of your fingers, and your your feet are quiet. They're restful. They're lovely feet, by the way. Thank you. I've got the same as you with a big toe yep, sli that... slightly pointing towards the other ones because yep. it wants to be more friendly. Well, it's because <laughs> modern shoes, well, because most shoes are designed not for feet but for fashion. So that's a whole other subject. Of that's of another thing. subject, yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, so Chris, um, when you mention the uh, function which uh, Professor... Brian Cox has been involved in in the Collider mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I listen now to something I heard in a TED talk by Ed Murphy. He was an astro, uh, astro chemist, which is rare, isn't it? Mm, it is. And he, he talked about how from the Big Bang, uh, from the Big Bang, there was only energy, and the energy at the point of the Big Bang uh, it exploded, for want of another word, and uh, became hydrogen, 75%, helium, 24%, 1% everything else, and that faster than the speed of light, the universe was formed, mm evenly distributed with those three functions. Uh, gravity took over and created suns a hundred, uh, uh, 600 times bigger than our sun. And at the center of those suns, uh, there hitherto had not been any elements of the universe of the periodic table. It would be lovely to have it be a chemist back in those days because there's only three things in the periodic table. Fusion occurred. Mm. And the fusion produced all the elements 
in the periodic table. Those suns became red dwarfs. They exploded and uh, bits of those suns formed the planets that go round our sun. Fortunately, not uh, the sun did not produce any, because uh, it's too small, it only produces carbon and nitrogen and a few others. And so the earth was equipped with all the elements that are needed for human life. And how do you uh, absorb the concept that? We, we are the Big Bang. We are those suns. We are now looking, leap forward in time. Like I said, leap forward. If you haven't got time like David Edinburgh, we've got, we've, got, we've got the ability to leap forward and know that we are stardust, mm. but it gives us enormous power to realize what we've come from and they're fiddling around in Switzerland with the collider to recreate something that happened and was us anyway. They don't need to look. And, and this, this goes back to um, how, in my opinion, religions and science has come to the same conclusion that at one point there was a nothingness and then all of a sudden there was this big bang and then it turned into everything. And for some reason, religious people argue with scientific people, but they, they've come to the same conclusion. They've just used different words and different names. So in a way, science has proved religion. And so one, once we understand that we all essentially believe the same thing and that we've just, it's just the language. <laughs> yes. We, we really can just give up all the fighting about what, what we believe and, and what God's name is and and, and, and all that because we all believe the exact same thing and science has proven it and so we can now move forward um, because we don't need to fight about this fact anymore there, it, there is mystery and we don't necessarily get to know God's name or what God is but essentially, there was nothing, and it turned into everything. And we are part of that everything. And we are indistinguishable on an atomic level, on a scientific le level. We, and we share DNA with plants and animals that are so similar. And so we have to realise that we are not separate, but we are. We are them. We are uh, everything. Uh, is it true that, is it true that uh, the chromosomes in a in a eucalyptus gum tree are 98% the same chromosomes as in our body? The, the, I'm, I'm unsure of the percentages, but um, it's always high. Very, very high. We come from plants. Exactly. Uh, and and um, why, why, why didn't the dinosaurs, uh, who were one root from creation, from uh, evolution, if you like, why, why did it stop at dinosaurs? I mean, don't you think there were men living with the dinosaurs? I do, and um, do I you? also think that uh, aliens have played an impact in the creation of humans. Um, but but why, does, why is there any need to include aliens? Because they all would have emanated from the same uh, primordial puddle of water. Indeed, indeed. Um, mm. But based on the evidence... Um, of mm. unexplained mm. mysteries. And oh, I see. Exactly. Based on the elements of unexplained mysteries. Yep. So, for example, um, uh, depictions of beings in Ecuador matching um, depictions of beings in um, uh, Mesopotamia, I think it was, or some, some such. And they look exactly the same of these winged figures and um, holding a, yes. a bag and, and such. Uh, I've seen cave drawings in, um, it's on me now, I've seen cave drawings on the road to Timbuktu, 14,000 years old cave drawings, and there were monsters that, that are unexplainable in the cave drawings on the top of the Hogar Mountains. So that, that fits exactly with what you say. Indeed. 
and it, and it could even go. Um, you could even talk about dragons, dinosaurs before. So dinosaurs are fine, but for some reason, um, despite multiple cultures across the world believing in dragons and um, talking about them as if they were real, we've decided that they do not exist um, and that um, they have never existed. And for some reason, people in the olden days just made up all sorts of stuff. They drew pictures of things which didn't exist for no apparent mm. reason. Mm. Um, whereas the, there's an overwhelming weight of evidence to suggest that, that there perhaps was um, visitations by extraterrestrial uh, mm. beings and mm. that that doesn't have to prove or disprove any other mm. theories on religion or, or science or anything. It's simply an interesting mm. historical component to look the, into. The, the, um, the purpose that it has, the, the, pur the purpose that it has to me that you uh, uh, leave space for extraterrestrial beings, uh, that the purpose of that is that it shows you that you have an open mind, yes. right? And an open mind is what we need to solve unimaginably difficult problems that seem unimaginable, but when you've got an open mind, I'm bringing you back to that thought that I had, we, if we leapfrog, leapfrog forward over and above the problems, the solution is waiting for us. Absolutely. And, and um, it's important to remember as well that the, when um, people talked about the gods, um, not necessarily God, but the gods, if you replace the gods with extraterrestrial aliens and then you start to realise that we are in a, in, a, in a way becoming like them, we are becoming technologically advanced. And so that leads us to an infinite potential, um, potentially, and um, exploration of the universe as a possibility, as an inevitability. But we just have to accept some things first, um, and they can be confronted to a lot of people. Right. So essentially, um, with your spiritual experience, what science would say was that um, dimethyltryptamine was released from your pineal gland and made you see those things, um, which in reality is true. That does not discount it as a, as a real experience. Um, the dimethyltryptamine could merely be a pathway into the spirit world and allow you to actually communicate with beings in another dimension, on another planet, existing in somewhere else, essentially. Um, and what was the other question? Uh, what were you going to talk about? Um, there was something else. Um, damn it. I forgot now. <laughs> It'll was, come back. What was after that? Um, I, I can't think. I know there was something important. Yes. So, I'll just have a pause while you think. Yeah. Oh, this is a so describe it. Yep. Okay. So describe it. I'll have to read it. So. Let's break this down. Uh, oh, oops. A fractal is a representation of both infinity and how all is one yet appears to be separate. It also represents the mirror of reality, how all is a reflection of the self. Reflection, when you think about it, is simple symmetry. Symmetry is geometry. Geometry is the building block of nature which is produced through harmonic vibrations. Harmonic vibrations are produced through the compression and tension of the polarity between charge and discharge masculine and feminine, contraction and expansion, etc. The gradient of tension and pressure between polarity produces the periodic table of the elements, the building blocks of reality. So within the fractal is the secrets of the universe. This is why the Rosicrucians and other ancient peoples built in fractal designs, 
to create compression waves and carrier waves that generate non-destructive charge collapse, which produce bliss within the scalar field of creation. To create heaven on earth, as above, so below. <laughs> and then I'll also show you this other video. So, um, so this is electricity um, through wood, and it's creating these um, patterns, which are fractal patterns. These um, patterns look um, eerily similar to uh, a plant's roots, even a, a, a plant, um, the top part of a plant. They're also very similar to, and in, in very much the same um, uh, mm. blood vessels, um, lungs, mm. um, lightning. Um, mm. Basically everything in nature mm. follows fractal patterns. Mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> the most important concept on earth that you've never heard of before. Exactly, exactly. Uh, oh, sorry? Everything's a fractal. That's what it was. So essentially, um, in the 70s, um, there was a man named Benoit Mandelbrot. And what he, he was a mathematician working for IBM. Um, and essentially what he found was that there were these patterns that he was able to um, use to essentially create computers without the use of fractal mathematics. Computers wouldn't exist because it allowed more surface area within a given volume, essentially. Um, so all, computer, all computers are based on fractal mathematics. And to simplify what a fractal is, you can think of a mathematical formula. You take the result of that mathematical formula and you feed it back into that formula, in a sense creating an infinite loop. If you can use that information to create a visual representation of that maths, so, um, for example, you can create all CGI is based on fractal mathematics um, because instead of having to create each pixel by itself, you use the mathematic program to create it and you can essentially um, make it in the exact resolution that you, that you want. Um, what Benoit Mandelbrot eventually went on to discover is that everything in nature is essentially a fractal and fractal in nature. Um, and, it, and it continues on to the point where if you look at space, it looks very similar to the structure of an atom. And you actually start to wonder, are planets and suns merely protons and electrons and, and stuff in a much larger planet? Um, or a much larger existence or whatever you want to call it. And that essentially the only possibility is that everything is infinite, because how could there possibly be an end? And so instead of getting in your little spaceship and, and going as far as you can and reaching the end, you never will. The only way to actually explore is to become larger and, in, and enter the, the next dimension of existence simply by, uh, you're, you're now, instead of that planet being gigantic, it is now the size of an atom, and you're much larger than it. And it just keeps on going and going on forever. And as in that way, you can understand the existence of other dimensions, not necessarily, and, and the way they can be incorporated in the exact same space and time is because they're just on a larger scale, it's incomprehensible to us, that we cannot possibly perceive with these instruments. Um, but you can perceive it in the mind. So how come the energy of the at the beginning of time, if it, if it really was all in energy, how come that energy had the propensity to be you and me talking to each other? Well, when you get down, um, I think that the, the Earth is, I think the Asian um, philosophers had, had, were onto something with the idea of the yin and yang and and everything creating a balance. And it, and it comes down to um, chaos and order, and chaos and order in this constantly, um, you know, and that's the only way any kind of balance is is actually achieved. And this, this is very much um, the way that atoms work, in the way they must acquire an electron in order to balance. And, and so every, everything is, is about balance and um, chaos and, and order 
But the reason why our atoms have come together would be through some sort of, has to be through some sort of consciousness, um, through a, 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 a desire, through a will of, of something. There has to be a will first. Um, and then there's will, and then there's work. So l listen to me. The difference between all of the energy at one singular point called the Big Bang, the difference between th that, that substance, whether we call it energy or quarks or photons, or it, it, it was all made, the, 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 the Big Bang was made of collapsed molecules, collapsed atoms. In other words, the ingredient is space. Mm -hmm. By making space between the energy particles of the Big Bang, space is the most important ingredient for the formation of the universe. Do you believe that? Indeed, and I also believe that space isn't empty. And, and, and I don't think space is empty. I think space contains more something than the particles called protons, neutrons and electrons. Indeed. Indeed. I'm switching from camera backwards and forwards, and this is a remarkable. Uh, this is this is the thing I love most. Indeed. What we're talking about right now. Absolutely, and um, for years now, I I think um, fractals, mm. the concept and the idea of fractals, to me is the most important subject that nobody seems to know about. Could you summarise fractals again, Simpl um, simpler than what you said before? I, okay, yeah. Well, what, what I did say before was that you get a formula, um, so say 1 plus 2, and then that equals 3, and then you feed that back into the... For well, that was a bad example, but basically you get a mathematical formula, and then you get a result. Mm -hmm. That result, what it equals, is then fed back into the formula. So say this formula starts with x plus 1, the result goes into the space of x. Um, and in that way you're able to get an, an infinite amount of information. It simply doesn't end. Um, the, so what the, the, the reason why they um, originally came up with fractals is because they couldn't work out the geometry of a coastline. Because the the distance is determined by the size of the stick with which you're measuring the coastline. So they had to develop a new branch of mathematics in order to um, calculate chaos, basically, calculate nature. Yep. Um, and in a way, in that way, you're able to also take nature and simplify it and turn it into a formula. And so you can get a plant and convert it into a formula, essentially. And in that way, it allows you to see that um, everything in nature is orderly. It does follow a pattern. It is all patterns, and it's very mathematical. And that in itself suggests some form of wisdom or intelligence or design um, due to the, the incomprehensible complexity and yet simplicity in its... In, it, in its form, it can be simplified to a, to the, to a beautiful, in a beautiful way with numbers. And mm. the interesting thing about mathematics is numbers are strange. And so, as humans, we've created the concept of zero. Mm. It doesn't necessarily exist, but we've created and we've manipulated our environment. Wow. And all of computers are also based on zeros and ones. Yep. So the concept of yes, no, and on, off is the, it shows the duality of the reality of nature. And um, essentially, instead of a yin yang, if you think of a, a toroidal energy where the energy comes up and it curves around and then it feeds back into itself, and then that continues forever in a loop. And 